We have some great news for you and the fans. After 15 years, Double Fine, in tandem with our third-party production team, will be remastering your classic adventure game, Grim Fandango. I was really nervous going down to LA for the announcement because I was like, you know, those, those, those big um, platform-specific press conferences are so big and loud, and the stadiums are huge, and, and the games are always like, ugh, arrow through the neck, stab, and explosions, and these big blah things. I hate thinking about an adventure game being stuck in the middle of that, because adventure games are so, paced so s slowly. It's, it's hard to imagine them kind of competing with all that noise. And then they announced it, and we had all Peter Chan's art all over the boards, and it was beautiful, and then everyone cheered, and it was such relief. And glad that people were really interested in seeing it. I'm gonna get him. We had the uh, Sony conference, we made our Grimm announcement. Zeitgeist was announced and it was very exciting and everyone cheered. Uh, you could see that uh, we got a really great response from the people there. It made me feel good, like, you know, I, I care about the preservation of this game. It was cool to see that other people do too. Prior to that, we were, you know, doing all of the planning that we could do in terms of, like, talking about the approach that we would take and, um, and trying to get all our ducks in a row about, like, you know, what kind of features we'd want to add and what it would mean to remaster it and all that kind of stuff. We're incorporating point-and-click controls, um, which I was really skeptical of. Like, I didn't know how the game would hold up, but um, we got in touch with um, Toby, who did the, the mod of Grim Fandango um, to add point-and-click controls to Residual. The fans have really allowed this game to live on beyond the release, and they've put a lot of hard work into the game. Uh, and it's really quality stuff, too. And so, you know, where we've found the opportunity to reach out to some of these fans and, and hopefully to get them involved, and it's, it allows us to do things that were maybe outside the scope of what we originally had planned to do. So I've looked a little bit at what you did and how you annotated uh, each... Oh, God, set. everyone looked at my horrible source code. <laughs> <laughs> Just a bit. Um, but I, I was curious about the some of the things you just touched on with regards to like when you tell Manny to walk to a specific region, but the point where you define the hotspot and he needs to walk to to actually trigger the camera transition isn't even on camera at the current time. Like, did you author specific points for him to walk to on the walk planes? And he's been gracious enough to uh, help us integrate that uh, that work that he did into to our remastering. So we're still in a, a kind of. A research mode now where we're trying to find and just find doing the kind of um, archaeology we need to do to like dig up and find all the source material we can before we know entirely what's possible and so we'll hopefully be able to figure that out soon and make some announcements more detailed later but we don't have any specifics to announce right now but it'll be look better i'll say that it's gonna look better but we'll see what they're able to sort of dig up from the archives what if they what if we don't get the source assets trying to clean up dithering is like trying to clean up jpeg artifacting and just, yeah, I mean, it's kind of hard. <laughs> so I mean, I, I maybe you could remove well. some stuff, but it gets really tricky. Yeah, so let, let's start by just showing off the game that we have so far. All right. Well, here is the first time, perhaps, for many of you to see Grim Fandango running on the PS4. We've been hard at work, and uh, let's launch it. Our focus at this point in development is primarily on getting the game ported to as many different platforms as possible. Um, and we're also preserving the ability to run the game using the original assets and, and rendering techniques and stuff. Uh, so we're working on getting the classic software renderer that the game uses up and running on all of our target platforms. Yeah, you can see that this is really old and compressed using a super low resolution codec, which is something that we're hoping to fix in the remaster. And here we are in Manny's office with DualShock 4 controls. So you, you actually smoothed out some of the collision for the character movement too? Yeah, so the old uh, joystick controls that shipped in the original game weren't really up to snuff for modern standards, so we've done some improvements. We want to improve everything we can about how the characters look and are rendered. We don't want to really crack into reauthoring anything, because we want it to be done with respect to how the original artist made it. You know, Peter Chan's storyboards were authored to be a certain aspect ratio, and so I really want to keep it to that aspect ratio, but just have it look as, as good as we can make it look, which I think Wes Anderson has made that cool again, right? I personally feel like Grim Fandango coming out on the PlayStation 4 is kind of like getting a Blu-ray copy of Casablanca or something like that, right? And it's like you want the work to be as well presented and, and as well mastered as possible for this like you know new higher quality format, but you want the work to, to be the work. So what can we expect from the new renderer? Well, it's going to be running at 1080p. All of the 3D models are going to look a lot nicer per pixel lighting potentially some additional post-process effects, 
because uh, right now we're working off the original game files, which of course were really small and compressed for systems of their time. It still kind of depends on whether or not we get those original assets. But we actually have, um, uh, this has everything that the archives had uh, on it. So um, this little solid state hard drive has, um, I think the images were, it was, it was, it was probably 130 disks, like CD images. This little hard drive has everything that uh, Lucas still had in storage for, for Grim Fandango. Um, yeah, it's exciting to dig through all of this stuff, just because I care a lot about the game, and I, I know a lot about the game, but I mostly know a lot about the end product that finally shipped, and so uh, being able to you know, dig through all the source materials and get some insight into the development is, is obviously a, is a, is a pretty awesome position to be in. So like if we just look at the compressed original cutscene, you can see there's a lot of um, you know uh, fidelity issues and just like the quality of these lines here. There are a lot of artifacts from the video compression, and there's all this color banding um, in the sections here. Uh, this is a 16-bit color cutscene, and so anytime there's a nice smooth gradient, um, you're going to lose a lot of that detail, and it's going to kind of wash out. But then if we if we look at video exported from the original renders, the colors are better, the lines are crisper. Uh, there's none of that, that banding that we were seeing earlier. Um, the whole thing is just, it reads a lot more clean and uh, is, you know, exactly what the artist was looking at when they originally exported this cutscene. It looks a ton nicer, doesn't it? Yeah. But yeah, this is really promising because what this means is that we have basically everything that we need for sure to remaster all of the cutscenes in the game, which makes it, it's like one of the, one of the places where the game is most obviously sort of dated by the technology of the era. And so being able to up res that um, and make those come through really cleanly is going to be really nice and help bring it in line with the improvements that we're making to the real-time render. Yeah, there's a lot of exciting stuff in here.